Why are we fasting? Well, we're fasting, first of all, because it's a biblical pattern. Prayer and fasting is not something that only a few people do. I want to really help us with that in a minute here. It's not just for the top 10% or the holy of the holies or whomever we may decide it's for. It's for everyone. Someone say everyone. It's a biblical pattern. In fact, it's expected. God just expected us to do this. Let's look at three verses. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 2. What do we read in Matthew 6 and verse 2? I want you to notice. Let me go ahead and join you there. Matthew 6, 2. The Bible says, so when you give, not if you give. So he just jumps right in and begins to give guidelines. See, that's so when you give. Look at Matthew uh, chapter 6 and verse 5. We find, again, as he's giving instruction, it's not an if or, or, or we go through this. He just says, and when you pray, and then he gives some direction. And then I want you to look at verse number 16. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, when you fast. So it's an expectation. This isn't something unusual. It's not something only for certain people or certain churches or certain times of the year. It's just who we are. When you pray, when you give, when you fast, these are the ways that you do. It's a biblical pattern. So I want to establish that. This isn't something unusual. It's who we are as believers. We're going to understand more and more why. God has been faithful in 2021. Can we say amen to that? God has been faithful. Wow. What we have seen God do, what we have experienced, what we can stand and testify about. But I want you to get something. God has been so faithful in 2020 in every circumstance. Some have been very challenging, but God brought us through. How many have seen God faithful in a tough time in 2021? Yeah, not just the easy times. He's been faithful in the tough times. In every circumstance, we've seen the faithfulness of God. So how should we respond to that? What do we do when God is blessing, when he is faithful, when we have seen that? Well, I I believe what we do is we take the next step. We step up. We don't just go to sleep. We step up to the next thing God's going to do. Let me show you why we're doing this chosen fast. There was an unfortunate pattern in, in the book of Judges. During that time in Israel's life, when uh, there was no king and, and they were struggling to serve God. And there were seven times this cycle repeated. They would start here, if we think about a, a, a clock at 12 o'clock, and things were going great and God was blessing, and the nation was at peace and they were prosperous, but then they would begin to forget about God who blessed them. And their spirituality would begin to shift. And it's down to about three, and then we find themselves all the way at the bottom, down here at six o'clock. And, and they had turned their backs on God and forgotten God. It was a process. And things got so bad. They were so far away from God that their enemies were overcoming them. And raiders were coming in and stealing their harvests and stealing their crops. And the land was in shame and disgrace and miserable. And at that low point, what would they do? They began to call on God. God, please help us. Remember us. We're sorry. We repent. And guess what happened? The spiritual t- tide began to come back up. And it's rising. And here they're back high at 12 o'clock again. God is good. Thank you, God. We appreciate it. It's awesome. Then they forget about God. You you know, they got fat and sassy up here at the top. Got blessed and bored at the top. Anybody heard what I said? Got blessed and bored up here and took things for granted. And you know what happened? Things began to shift down again. Seven times they went through that. But there's a way you break that pattern of spiritual attrition. When you get to the top next time, instead of getting blessed and bored, fat and sassy, spiritually overfed, how many are with me right now? Instead of sitting there like we are sitting at this 12 o'clock right now and waiting for the cycle to come around, you step up to a new level when you get to 12. Instead of just letting gravity pull you down, you move up. You say, God, you've been so good. Let's find out what, what's next. God, you bless me. It's good. It's faithful. You're good. Lord, I'm going to spring up with this momentum. I'm going to go up with this next step. That's why we're doing this chosen fast. We are following, stepping up, moving with this momentum. Why are we doing this? What if this chosen fast in your life? What if this chosen fast could be the answer to the what ifs that you've been asking? What if this is the answer to the what ifs? What do you mean? So uh, let's look at this way. What if your first love could be restored? 
What if your passion could be rekindled? Instead of just talking about how it was. See, you know, I, some people are, are confused revival with nostalgia. In other words, I, I want to go back to the good old days when, you know, you had poofy hair in the 80s. And, 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 and I wore you know, uh, bell-bottom pants. And, and we had red shag, shag carpet in the church. And yeah, Listen, you don't have to wear bell-bottoms and pray on red shag carpet. You, you, you don't, you know, we're not after nostalgia. We're after a reawakening of the presence of God. And so what we're saying is I don't have to go back and be 28 or 38 or 58. God wants to do something in my life right now. What if, what if I could rekindle my passion? What if I could just stop going through the motion? Do you know that's possible? Anybody with me today? Do you know that's possible? What if I could restore that, that, that first love for God? You know, what if a stronghold could really be broken in my life? Anybody with me? Instead of making an excuse for it. Instead of just finding a self-help group where everybody has the same stronghold. I'm going to try over here. It's a little too quiet over there. What, what, what if the stronghold could be broken? What if your lifestyle could change? What if the pattern would come undone? What if instead of having to go around and say, this is what I do and this is what I am and this is what has me and this is where I'm trapped and just find some other people trapped in the same place and make each other feel okay for staying trapped. What if I stopped redecorating the tomb and believed that God could take me out of that and quit saying it'll always be this way? What if the stronghold could be broken? What if freedom could come? Anybody with me? That's why we're doing the chosen fact. We just dare to believe God's the same God he's always been. See, what if, what if healing could release across this congregation? What if miracles and signs and wonders could be like reading the book of Acts? Anybody with me on this? What, what, if, what, if, what has become my old dead religion could become a relationship again? What if I could walk with them? What if I began to hear the voice of God and my prayer life came online again and, 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 and Bible reading became fresh to me? Anybody with me right now? What if my relationship could happen? What, what if I could discover that God really can bring joy in my life? What if I could really walk in a peace? That passes the understanding of this life. What if I could begin to sleep so well I didn't need anything to help me get to sleep? What if I could begin to get up with so much joy I didn't need a Red Bull and a this and a that and a everything else? What if, what if I just got up on fire for God and said, look what the Lord has done. I can't wait to see what he's going to do next. What if those things could happen? That's why we're having a fast. We're just going to find out. Anybody want to find out? I, I want to find out. See, what if, what if I could begin to have my identity in Jesus? What if I could stop worrying about who liked me and doesn't like me? Who, who uh, what if, I don't even know what you call it. I don't care. Who canceled you off their Facebook? They may have done you a favor. What, what if I stopped uh, 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 trying to identify my validity and my worth based on how many followers I have? What if I could begin to know who I am because I looked in the word of God and he said, I'm chosen, I'm selected, I belong to him. I'm adopted, I'm a son, I'm a daughter, I'm his. What if my identity came out of my my relationship with him and I'm not so dependent on everybody around me what if you had no social media for a month I'm not even going to go there this month I'm not even going to go there I just want to see God but but how you know what if you didn't know what everybody said all you had was what God said you know what, what, what if what if you <laughs> I'm not going to say it. What if you didn't have to see your picture 38 times to feel good about yourself? What if you just knew who you were because you looked in this mirror? I, I, maybe you want to need a new mirror. Maybe you don't like what's in that mirror. Get in this mirror. It just might change some things. I don't know. I'm just saying. I, I'm going to move on. I got more to say there. but See, a chosen fast is not like other fasts. It's not a spiritual ritual. It's an encounter with a living God. It, 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 it is the realization that he's every bit as good as he says he is. 
He's just as real as he says he is. He's just as near as his word says he is. He's just as ready to meet me, walk with me, talk with me as his word says he is. I, what, what if we just decided I'm not going to make any excuses or take no for an answer. I'm going to encounter God. I'm going to start this year in the presence of God. See, the chosen fast is for the hungry. It's for the hungry. For somebody who says, I need more of him. Anybody? I want more of God. I'm, you, you, know, you know this dissatisfaction that may be in your life today? Yeah. You know, you've been kind of looking at your wife side-eyed. You've kind of been wondering what's wrong with her. Why she doesn't treat you like Tarzan like she used to. Maybe because you look, never mind. But, 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 but uh, you, and, and you, wife, you've been looking at that husband thinking... He doesn't know what he's got. And there's that little edge in the house. There's that little tension in the house. You know, you know there, there's that dissatisfaction that you go to work and you used to love your job and it's just not there. You, it's a dissatisfaction. You got in your car to drive to church today and all you could see was everybody else's car. And, 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 and you used to love that house and now you think maybe I need a bigger one and you know maybe that dissatisfaction is really the voice of the Holy Spirit saying it's not that what you're looking for if you come back to me if you'll walk with me maybe that dissatisfaction is not something this world can provide it is the spirit of God saying come on inside with me come on closer to me maybe all the things we're trying to get this world to meet could be found with a closer walk with him just what if what if? You understand? This fast is for the hungry. It's for the dissatisfied. And, and, and listen, let me tell you, it's not just for those up on the spiritual high plane. It's for the weary. This chosen fast is for someone who says, I don't know if I can take another step. This chosen fast is for people who are saying, Pastor, I, man, I, I'm, I'm in the middle of a rough time. I don't think I can do this fast. You're the exact person this fast is for See, because you're going to discover it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. God's just looking for a chance to show up in your life. See, this chosen fast, again, is not for the ultra 10%. It's not for those that you think of the spiritual high leaders and pray all the time and read all the time. This chosen fast is for somebody who's so low, you had to pull your socks down to see how to walk to the car today. It's for the weary it's for the weary. God wants to show up for you. Can I tell you it's for the desperate? Yes, sir. Chosen fast is for the desperate. For somebody who says, if something doesn't happen in my life, I don't know what I'm going to do. That's, it's, it's for you. It's for you. This, this is a supernatural divine appointment in your life. It's for the desperate. Can I, can I be honest with you? It, it's for the bored. Some of you are bored with your faith. You're bored with God. You're bored with church. You know, you're, you're bored. You're, you're, it's, it's dull. There, there, there's no vibrancy and, and, and passion. It, it, you say, well, if I'm bored, why do I want to see God? Because you're bored because you don't have enough of him. You're bored because there's too many other things that have come and, and consumed the place that the presence of God. It, it, see, if you're bored, if you're weary, if you're weak, you, you, this fast is for you. This chosen fast, it's just on time. If you feel lost or trapped, it's exactly what you need. Everybody with me? You see, it's just, this is the pattern for you no matter where you are in your life. So let's pursue, church family. The proof of passion is pursuit. If I'm passionate, I pursue it. If, I, if it's important to me, I go after it. So, so, so that's what January is about. This is a bold thing we're doing. It's a, we, we didn't say, okay, I'm going to give you a day. We, we didn't say, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to miss one meal. No, we said, God, we're going to give you this month to start off with. We're going to do several things. We're going to have 10 days beginning tomorrow to, on this Daniel fast, but we're going to come on Sunday night. and We're, we're going to give you this month because we're hungry. Because maybe you're weary, or maybe you're bored, or maybe your faith is weak, or maybe you're desperate, or maybe you're beginning to understand my dissatisfaction is a holy dissatisfaction. So I want to, I'm going to seek God. I'm going to pursue. 
This is bold. This is a, come on, can I be honest? This is an average Christianity in America in 2022. But who wants to be average? Who wants to be average? Jesus is an average. Christianity is not average. There's nothing about it that's ordinary or natural. It's supernatural. And God is just looking. So let's take this adventure together. Come on. Let's do this thing together. We've got it arranged on a website. Beginning tomorrow, there's a a, a devotion for the next 10 days. We can all be reading that together, praying that together. The guidelines of what a Daniel fast is are there on our website. You can look at that today and get ready to make it simple. Daniel fast is just, hey, we're going to eat vegetables and fruit and, and not worry about other stuff. There's a little... Or you can, you know, you can find it. I'm not a dietitian. I'm a pastor. So go on the website and, and, and read that. You know, I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I'm a pastor. I, you, go figure that out. But it's right there for you. Got it all for you. You know, it, it, it's, it's kind of just like this. Uh, you know, fasting is, is when you, uh, let's, let's look at it this way. It's turning away from myself and turning to God. That's really what prayer and fasting is. It's turning away from me and turning to God. It's saying, you know, I'm not the source, but God is. I don't have the answers, but he does. It's turning away from me and turning to God. It's, it's this fasting is pursuing God's presence. God, I'm just, my, it's prioritizing God's presence. It's, you know, and here's what I find. When I pray and fast, it releases God's abilities in the midst of my inabilities. So you don't have to get ready and spiritual to fast. You just start where you are. And it begins to release his ability in the midst of my inability. So, so that's why we call this a, a chosen fast. Now listen to this, all right? I, I'm, I'm setting the stage for us today. There, there, are, there are three parts of this chosen fast. A chosen fast is not like other fasting. It's unique. Everybody with me? It's very unique. There, there are three priorities in chosen fast. And I, I kind of gave them all an F uh, letter, so you'll remember these. It is the fast, the 10 days Daniel fast, but also it is freedom. Someone say freedom. That's what our Sunday nights are about. It's freedom. But there's a unique quality we're going to see. Not only is it a fast, not only is it freedom, it's feeding. We're going to go to Isaiah 58, and I don't know that I've ever seen anyone do this in a fast, but part of the chosen fast is that we're going to feed hungry people. How many want to do a chosen fast? Not just an ordinary fast. Okay, thank you. Somebody's going like, I don't know. Okay, I'll take that hand by faith. All right. So, so in other words, why in the world do I feed people while I'm hungry? Can you see the power of that? (laughs) Do you see that? You mean I'm going to feed people while I'm needing food? Exactly. You mean I'm going to give away what I've been thinking about all day? Exactly. It releases something powerful when we do it. So let's let's look at this for a moment. Let's, 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 Let's go to Daniel chapter 1. And verse 11, Daniel 1, 11, turn her with me. How many are going to find that? Thank you for those seven. How many are going to find that? Thank you, thank you. You know, it's right behind me. You know that already. But Daniel 1 and verse 11. So tomorrow we begin this 10-day Daniel fast. It kicks off the chosen fast. This Daniel fast is inside of the chosen fast. This whole month is our chosen fast. And so what we're learning, there's more than one way to fast. There are several priorities in this. Daniel 1.11. You know Daniel was taken captive with the rest of those from Israel when Nebuchadnezzar uh, came and invaded and, and destroyed Jerusalem and brought them back to Babylon. Here he is, uh, chosen to come in and have to serve a heathen king. And Daniel makes a decision. He said, I'm going to resolve to serve the Lord. D- here's what I find. My choices direct my actions. I'm going to say that again. My choices direct and affect my actions. So Daniel said, I resolve, this is what I'm going to do. I want to encourage you today to join your pastor, join Pastor Phyllis and I. We resolve to do this chosen fast. I want you to make a decision. Come on, make it right now. You don't have to tell me, you and the Lord. Say right now, God, I resolve to do this. Make a choice. Don't say, I'll think about it in the morning. Come on, make a choice. I resolve to do this. I purpose in my heart to do this. You know, when you make a choice, your actions will follow. I don't let emotions or circumstances dictate my decisions. My choices affect my circumstances. Come on. Somebody say amen to that. What I do now determines what happens next in my life. Every harvest I reap in the future is a result of the seed I plant today. I resolve to do this. Come on. Somebody say amen. So what did Daniel do? He resolved to do this. And his fast was how he was able to carry that decision through. That's what we're doing. So look at Daniel 1.11. Daniel then said to the guard... 
whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Please test your servants for 10 days. Someone say 10 days. Okay. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So spiritual resolve always has an action. He says, we're going to fast. And he said, if this fast is from God, you're going to see the evidence. I believe this fast is from God, and I want you to get ready to see the evidence of how God will confirm this. All right? Verse 14, so we agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. Verse 15, at the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. And better nourished than any of the young men who ate the men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds. Who wants that? Say amen. amen. Of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. Amen. At the end of this time set by the king to bring them in, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them and he found none equal. Come on. None equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's service in every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them. He found them ten times better. Than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. Men and women who will put God first and resolve to serve him will be blessed and honored of God in the midst of those who oppose them, in the midst of the marketplace. I want you to hear me today. Spiritual fasting is not just for our Sunday gathering, it's for when you go to work tomorrow. God will bless you in the marketplace. God will honor you in your work. He will bless the work of your hand. Your fast will carry a blessing in your home, in the marketplace, in the workplace, in the schools with learning and understanding. I'm telling you, God will back up his word when his people obey him. He will show himself strong in every one of those areas. So, so we, that, this is the format beginning tomorrow for the first 10 days to kick off this chosen fast. It, it's kind of like this. You know, also, Daniel prayed, we read later, three times every day. So here's, here's the thought. Here's the concept. We get up tomorrow morning. We're doing this Daniel fast, and, and we get to the middle of the day. Now, I've discovered, have you discovered that particularly here in America, we have an inner clock that goes off at least three times a day? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. You know how we are. Some countries eating one meal a day is a celebration. How many heard what I said? Been there, seen them. But for us, we wake up, get to work. You know, if you got up late, which none of you ever do, and you weren't prepared, which none of you were never there, and you rushed in and barely made it a little bit late, which none of you never do, and, and you didn't have time to eat, which none of you never do, and, and, and it gets about 10 o'clock, and you're like, my God, I'm going to pass out. Ah. You don't have diabetes, but you say, if my sh blood sugar's off, I'm... You know, and, and you start dragging yourself to the break room. You know, you know, I, got, I can't concentrate. I, I can't concentrate. I, I, don't, I don't think I can work. It's 10 o'clock. I haven't eaten. You know, and, and you're, you're about to pass. And then you, you know, you, you single guys. And then there's that new lady in another department. She walked by. Hey. Feeling good over here. You strut around like a rooster. You know, two minutes ago, you couldn't eat, and they look at you now. So anyhow, three times a day, that clock goes off, right? Three times a day. So here's what we do. Here's the Daniel fast. All right, boom, it's lunch. Here's what you do. You say, you know what? I'm on this fast. You grab an apple, get a handful of nuts, you know, get somewhere. And if all you can do is five minutes, ten minutes, you just you eat your apple, and you say, God, I thank you for the day. I'm on this chosen fast. I'm dwelling in the presence of God. I'm moving a little closer. Don't make a big deal. Don't act all sad, weary. Don't spend 14 hours planning a menu. I don't want to hurt your feet. Some of you have already been on Pinterest and Google. 38,000 Daniel fast meals. You've already spent more money at the grocery store buying your food for the Daniel fast, help me Jesus, then you tithe today. Now, Dwayne told me to say that. I just, that was, I put that in my... Come, everybody with us. We're on the plan. 
The point is, God, I just want more of you. You understand? I just want more of you. I just want more of you. You know, you know, I, I'm just, I, just give me a little apple. I eat a banana. Let me, you know, eat some of Grandma's green beans. Eat your vegetables. You've been needing to eat your vegetables anyway. Your mother's told you that all your life. Call mom up on a fast. Say, Mom, I'm eating my vegetables. See, she's going to love you. God's going to bless you. But the whole thing is I just want more of the Lord. I want to remind myself. I want to walk through this day when I get up in the morning. When, I, when it's lunch, when it's, when it's evening, God, I'm drawing close to you. Are you with me? I'm drawing close to you, Lord. It's not about the, what we're eating. It's about the presence, about seeking God. It, it, it's drawing close. Look at, look at James 4, 8, the Passion Translation. I, I, I love this scripture. Look, look at this. It's just this simple. Look at this. Move your heart closer and closer to God, and he will come even closer to you. Come on. Read that out loud, that sentence. Move your heart. Come on, read it with me. Move your heart closer and closer to God, and he will come even closer to you. Come on, let's say it again. Move your heart closer and closer to God, and he will come even closer to you. Now, we don't need to read that next line, do we? Yeah, we do. But make sure you cleanse your life. I didn't say this. It's in the Bible. You sinners. And keep your heart pure. How do I keep clean? Come on, look me in the face. How do I, how do I cleanse myself, stop sinning, keep my heart pure, and stop doubting? Make your heart closer and closer to God. He'll come close to you. You know how we, we've heard a lot of people in church. We preached the second sentence and didn't teach them the first one. They come to church week after week, and all they ever heard was, make sure you cleanse your life, you sinners. Keep your heart pure and stop doubting. And people left under condemnation. What we should have taught people is this. Do you know that if you move your heart, come on, come on, you, can you do that? I'm going to move my heart closer and closer to God. And God's going to come closer and closer to me. And when I'm in the presence of God, temptation doesn't look like it looked when I'm way over there. And doubt doesn't look like it looked when I'm way over there. And fear doesn't look like it looked when it's way over there. The solution to break out of that sin is not you stop sinning, it's you get closer to to God and the closer we come to him the blessings and reality of God begin to happen in our life all right so let's look at Isaiah 58 come on I got, I'm just laying this out how many are, are realizing what God's going to do it's it's going to be dynamic Isaiah 58 this is the freedom come on the turner with me we got to look at this before we uh celebrate some people being baptized in water today. What a day. Hey, what, aren't you? I'm almost jealous. How, how great to get baptized in water on the first day, first Sunday of the new year. I mean, what a picture of new life, a new beginning, huh? We're going to celebrate that in just a minute. But let's look at this. Give me just a few minutes here. Isaiah 58. So there's the fast we're looking at Daniel. But here's the freedom. Someone say freedom. See, this chosen fast, as we're about to see, is not the ritual it's the reality of the presence of God and what he does. All right, Isaiah 58, 1. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sin. So what was the problem with God's people here? All right? What was he dealing with? Let's look at this. Verse 2. For day after day they seek me out. Again, we, we emphasize this. Look at the verbiage. They seem eager to know my way. So there was an outer pattern that did not line up with the real condition of their heart. Amen. Everybody with me? Amen. So we're a chosen fast is not about just going through the motion. Oh, all right, it's January. Pastor's going to ask us to fast. Let's endure and get on. With it. No, 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 no. Is there something more God's doing here? Is there something deeper? Listen, listen. Do I have a divine appointment with God? Is my first love about to burst back in flame? It, it's my freedom about to be released in my life. Come on, anybody with me here? Am I about to have the freedom, the, the deliverance, this thing I've been... Oh, yes, so he says, here, here's my issue, God says. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions here it is again, and seem eager for God to come near them. He said they seem that way. But look at their questions because they don't understand what they're doing. They're into religion and ritual instead of the reality of a relationship. 
Look at their complaint. They say, why have we fasted and you've not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you haven't even noticed? Now, they're charging God. They're accusing God. They say, we're going through the motions and you're not doing anything about it. We're going through the outer ritual and you don't seem like you're even here. What does God say? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please. You're doing the outer, you're, you're, you're going through the ritual, but as soon as you get through it, that you're going to do something else. You do as you please. You exploit your workers. Those of you that own the company and own the business, you're exploiting the people that work for you. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife. Look at that. You know why? You know why they're fasting? How can fasting end in quarreling and strife when it's just an outer thing, not an inner heart? So you're mad and cranky because you're hungry. What's the new word? You're hangry. You're hangry. You're a, pardon my language, you're a mean old cuss. Left church, went home, slapped somebody. <laughs> Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. L listen to what God says. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard. Now look at verse 5. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself? Is it only for buying one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes? So in other words, you can go through all those outer things, he said. He said, is that all I'm trying to get you to do? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Verse 6, look at this. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? So we're going to fast. Let's do the real thing. Let, let, let's, let's do what God has chosen. Let's choose what he's chosen. Let's do what God is saying. And watch what happens. Is this not the kind of fasting I've chosen? What begins to happen? Remember I said there's a freedom, a genuine, real, authentic, documentable, walking in it, experiential freedom that comes from this. What is it? To loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. I believe in the name of Jesus. I'm going to prophesy over you right now. These generational curses that have been rampant in your family and gone through your home and you've had to tell people, well, I was just born this way and I've just got bad DNA and it's all that I know and all that I've seen. I'm going to tell you what I've told you before. I've stopped arguing on how you were born, but I know how you were born again. You were born again by the Spirit of the living God and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You may have been born upside down, torn up, ripped up, messed up, DNA out of order. I don't know about all that. Like I said, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a genealogist. I'm a preacher of the Word of God. And the Word of God says, when I walk into what He chooses in the name of Jesus, what happens? I am untied from the cords of my yoke. I am set free from my oppression. I am free in the name of Jesus. I don't have to live under depression and fear and discouragement and suicide and rejection and inferiority and insecurity. The Word of God says who the Son has set free is free indeed. And we declare freedom in this house in the name of Jesus. And then look at this twice. You can't miss this. You have to look at this. Verse 7. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and provide the poor wanderer with shelter? And when you see the naked to clothe them and not turn away from, look, your own flesh and blood. I want to prophesy again. There is going to be restoration and healing in the families, in the households. We declare God is doing it now in the name of Jesus. I expect nothing less than his word. Anybody with me right now? Now, now we get that then, then, not before then. Watch this, then, 
your light will break forth like the dawn. Your healing will quickly appear. Come on, church. We have some folks that need some miracles. I want to be part of seeking God that looses a spirit of healing on this place. Amen? Your healing will quickly appear. Your righteousness will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. We overcome the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. We declare we're not going to be in fear and walk around fearful of what's going to happen. God is with us, in front of us, behind us. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. Come on. You will cry for help and he will say tomorrow, next year, here am I. Here am I. Come on, here am I. If you do away, look, look, he, he, with the yoke of oppression, with a pointing finger and malicious talk. See, if you get, if you get hungry enough for God, you're not going to worry about what everybody else is doing. You know, when I stop pointing my finger and playing the judge and the jury and just start seeking God, things are going to happen in my life. If you spend yourself, here it is again, on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like noonday. See, here's the deal with this chosen fast, all right? Instead of our actions becoming a ritual, like we read here, they become a reaction to the presence of God. Instead of trying to do it on the formality on the outside, we begin to act like people who've encountered God. You understand? See, our actions without a change of heart will create conflict. We just get angry and frustrated in the flesh. But, but, but when our actions are a reaction from a changed heart, they release blessing and favor and encouragement in the lives of people around us. You know, when you begin to do a Daniel fast and a chosen fast the right way, what is a duty becomes a joy. <laughs> Instead of saying, well, I got to pray today. No, you say, I get three times to get it, God, today. See, what becomes, it's a duty becomes a joy. It becomes a blessing. It becomes a privilege. You, you know, listen, you, you, some of you, you remember, I know it was a long time ago, but when some of you were single, you know, did you ever have your friends try to set you up on a blind date? How, how, did you have to one of those? Did you dread the next time they tried that? You know, you, you, you said, you, you know, said we, we want you to go out so-and-so. And you said, well, what do they look like? And this is where you know you're in trouble. They say, they're real nice. Well, well blah, 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 blah. But, what do they look like? You got a picture? No, but they're, they're real nice. Okay. So... You dread that, don't you? Don't you dread that? That's a duty. It's like, come on. And then they put guilt on you. Well, you know, you're my friend. I thought you were my friend. Oh, okay, okay. You dread it. That's how some people fast. But when you fall in love, when your passion is there, and, and you get to see your loved one. You get to see that one. I, I tell you all the time, I mean, I've, I've only been in love with one woman in my whole life, so I can only talk about Phyllis. But I remember, you know, when I met her and then when, then when we started dating, we, we fell in love. And I didn't have a car and I was in college and she's over here. Man, I, 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 when I finally got to borrow somebody's car and go see her, I, I tell you, I wasn't driving to see her like, okay, here I go. I got to go over there. I was like, man, I hope I don't get a speeding ticket because I can't get... <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about? See, I, I dreaded some of those other things. You know what I'm talking about. You want to go out, they're nice. I said, oh, this is going to be bad. But when I got to go see Phyllis, it was, I mean, it was like, I, if the police were going to give me a ticket, they'll just have to follow me to her house and write it while I'm talking to her because I'm not stopping. That's what passion does. See, it turns the duty into a joy. It, it, it turns the drudgery and the ritual into a relationship. And this chosen fast does that. It begins to give us freedom. Come on, how many of you see what I'm talking about? The freedom of the Lord begins to come. There's deliverance. Strongholds get demolished. Generational curses are broken. Are you with me? Restoration happens. Dem demonic power is overcome. Your family starts being restored. Your integrity and your legacy begins to be restored. Why? Because we are drawing near to God and God is drawing near to us. And this isn't a ritual. It's a relationship. God says, if I do this chosen fast, he's going to draw near to me. He's going to show up. And what I've been praying for and needing and searching and seeking is going to begin to happen in my life. You need to say, it's time. Come on, somebody say, it's time, it's time, it's time. 
How do we get there? We get there God's way. I want to go to this last, uh, uh, these last verses here before we pray together today. Go to 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 1. Let me give you an illustration. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 1 of what happens on these kind of fasting experiences. It's a picture. This is just a picture of Isaiah 58 of what God said he would do. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Verse number one, maybe you can relate to this. <laughs> maybe, maybe uh, you know, we were talking about turning the page and writing a new chapter. Maybe you say, dear God, I need a new chapter. I got some, <laughs> there, there's some bad folks in this chapter behind me. Maybe, maybe the chapter you just came out of looks like 2 Chronicles 21. After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites with some of the me unites. Come on, you ever felt like that? You look around and say, I don't know who these people are, but every bad character I know is on my back right now. See, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the me unites came to make war. Now, look at this. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. It is already in Hazazazan, Tamar, that is, in Gedi, alarmed. That would be an appropriate response. You're about to die. Alarm, Jehoshaphat. Here's that word again. What did Daniel do? Resolve. What did Jehoshaphat do? Resolve. You know, instead of us running around like our hair is on fire, maybe we need to stop and make a resolve today. We need to resolve. Look at this. Daniel resolved to inquire of the Lord. And what did he do? He proclaimed a what? Proclaimed a fast. So it's one thing to proclaim it. <laughs> it's another thing for people to respond to it. Are you with me? Yeah. Verse 4. The people of Judah came together. Come on. I believe the people of Calvary are going to come together. Yeah. Huh? And what are we going to do? We're coming together to what? Seek the Lord. They came together from every town. He says, we've got some enemies. Anybody got some enemies? Yeah. We've got some enemies. See, faith doesn't deny the enemies, but it recognizes the God. Yeah. And so we got some enemies. Okay, we've got some enemies. But we're going to resolve, we're going to declare a fast, and we're going to do this together. Come on, somebody say together. I really want you to see, Calvary, I believe the, the measure of what God's going to do will be determined by how we respond. I want to encourage you to say, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to jump in on this thing. I'm going to be a part of this thing. I'm going to do this. So they did. So, so, what, so what happens? Let's drop down, and, and I want you to look with me at verse number 15. Let me just edit this because I want to wrap this up. So God spoke to them. God sent them a word with a prophet. And he said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. I believe God's speaking to us. Come on, somebody say amen to that. This is what the Lord says. He says, listen, do not be afraid or discouraged. Come on, let's say amen to that. For the battle is not yours but God's. Oh, come on. Come on. You know this battle you've been fighting. Let me give you some help. I, I got to stop preaching, but this is so good. Do you know that? Do you know why things look so hard for you right now? Because God wants to show you how big He is right now. See, if it was a little battle, you might think you could win it, but God let enough enemies get around you that when we have this breakthrough, not if, but when we have this breakthrough, you're going to say, Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. You're about to see God bigger in your life.